What it do, flight crew? FTC. Flight T stand up. It's June. We yeah. The Golden State Warriors should have never won a championship by Jimmy High Roller. I knew some type of video like this was coming by the man High Roller. I was waiting for it. <sighs> Let's see how we can prove my man High Roller wrong. Let's check it out. This didn't go the Warriors way. did win. I don't know how many different ways to say Deserve. it, but it's, uh, it's a, it was a special year, all things considered. Now I'm in a new experience for me, Draymond Loon. Tried to make the most of it, come back. Bottle this up, everybody make the right strides, take advantage of the summer, and don't want to see us next year. 391 days later. Yeah. Nah, that's different. And the Celtics home floor, too. Sheesh. He called it. Against all odds, the Warriors are now the 2022 NBA champions. Somehow, this team that was dead in the water just two seasons ago has been crowned NBA champions. But this team had no business even being here in the first place. This Warriors team was never supposed to win this championship. A roster full of has-beens and fringe players making a run at a championship? It's impossible. Well, at least it should have been impossible. No, but not for the Warriors. Curry. And as I was watching Steph completely dismantle the Boston Celtics on their home court to close out the finals, I thought to myself, I'll more than likely never see another player like this in my lifetime. What Steph is doing cannot be duplicated or repeated. He is truly a one of one. And I think it's time we take a closer look at where he ranks among the greatest players to ever play this game. Because the Warriors should have never won this championship. Why you say that? Today's so the man I wrote you by know we gotta do skip right through this so you know what I'm saying. Final seconds okay. Final seconds here of this 2018 NBA season. There's the buzzer. There's a new dynasty. And that just in the like Silas Edison. So they think the we, we need a KD, bro. Champions once again, back to back titles. Three you think KD gonna rejoin? And the latest for the sweep. Do y'all remember exactly where you were and how you felt? When this happened, yeah. I do. Oh, I wait, no, that's 2018. Remember watching the Warriors dismantle the NBA year after year on their way to an all but certain championship. I remember sitting idly by as my favorite player was getting walked out of the building in the finals. It was inevitable and it felt perpetual. Like the reign of the Golden State Warriors was never going to end. And I would spend the rest of my days watching this unbeatable, unstoppable Goliath of a basketball team make quick work of every single organization that stood in their way. I felt hopeless. The Warriors pushed me to the brink of insanity and it was never going to end. Or at least that's what I thought. Uh, hated that. You know what's crazy? I feel like if Durant never got injured, I think he would have stayed. Man. Damn. Damn. Injuries, man. You never let it set you back. And that was it. A five-year run cementing their spot as one of the greatest dynasties in NBA history all came crumbling down in a matter of moments. Goliath had fallen. And for the first time in half a decade, the door was open for other teams to win it all. The Raptors won their first championship in franchise history. The Bucks won their first championship in half a century. And the Lakers were crowned champions for the first time in a decade. The dragon had been slayed. And I could now rest knowing the Golden State Dynasty was behind us. <laughs> Six NBA Finals in eight years. Four So inspirational, yo. I couldn't have been more wrong. Because somehow, despite injuries and roster changes and ups and downs and everything in between, the Warriors are champions once again. We said they were getting too old. We said they were too injury prone. We said the roster looked like a G League team. We said they couldn't win without Kevin Durant. And they proved us 
all wrong. Wow. Just last season, if you told me the Warriors were going to win another championship, let alone a championship this season, I would have checked you into a mental institution. They would Yo, he would have checked me into one because I proved people that doubted wrong. From one of the best teams Yo, in the history of the 15 NBA. 15 win season two years ago. The NBA, to champions again in record time. Just take a moment to appreciate this roster that defied all odds and became champions. Out of the 14 players that suited up in the postseason, six of them had zero playoff experience. Instead of seeking out the brightest stars around the league, the Warriors went and acquired players that fit within their system. Bro, and, and really, this is the most organized team high-key in NBA history, too, if you're now looking at it. Because they didn't really have, they didn't have a super team at all. You can't say it's a super team. Maybe if you wanted to even stretch it out and say, okay, 2017, 2018 era, when they had Kevin Durant, when we had Kevin Durant, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, maybe you could call that because this is before Klay Thompson got injured. You got to look at it. Like, every player on this NBA roster just literally evolved, bro, within the entire NBA season, you guys. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's like, their potential. it's definitely up there. Even like the 95 Bulls was a stacked team, bro. Jr. They saw immense utility. This is just guys natural organic Higgins right here. And Jordan Poole and gave them a chance to shine on the biggest stage. Even Andre Iguodala, the oldest player in the entire NBA, played a crucial role as a mentor the oldest and a leader player. for the Warriors throughout the playoffs. This was a masterclass on coaching, adjustments, and players buying into their role and maximizing their impact on the game. The catalyst of this improbable run the once in a lifetime yeah. talent of Stephen Yo, Curry. Yo, this is inspirational, this bro. Year's playoffs, we were asked what a great NBA season. And whose legacy would be altered the most with the championship. I thought maybe Chris Paul, Giannis, James Harden, maybe even Luka Doncic. But the answer all along was Stephen Curry. Because Curry, now man. that he has a long-awaited, well-deserved finals MVP, the man has done it all. Four championships, two MVPs, eight All-NBA teams, eight All-Star appearances, two scoring titles, an All-Star MVP, most three-pointers in like NBA that. history, and a Finals MVP. One of the greatest careers the NBA has ever seen. And at 34 years old, he is still as incredible as ever. Now, as NBA fans, we have an unhealthy obsession with all-time rankings. Moving players around on our all-time list every other week like some sort of sick game of musical chairs. But if we're going to be honest with Curry's ourselves, top five I think has we can I'm saying he's number one all-time. players that but remain a step above everyone You have to put him top five. And these are those players. Now, where you choose to rank these players will be... Top 10 greatest of all time. Yeah, you got to take out Curry for... You got to take out Bill Russell for Curry... You could take out either Bill Russell. These, so these are the official top 10 greatest of all time. It says it right there on the title. Right off the bat, like, you either have to do this. You have to take out Bill Russell for Curry. And, not, and, and whoever I take out, nonetheless, they're still, like, you know what I'm saying, amazing Hall of Fame NBA players. Just because you're taking out the top 10 does not mean you're, it does not mean you're trash or nothing like that. You know, but it's just like, come on, bro. We got to put the, the facts and respect for where it needs to be. You got to take out either Bill Russell, and I hate to even say it, like Tim Duncan, bro. Like, you know, I watched Tim Duncan through the early 2000s, you know what I'm saying? But if you're talking about top 10 and you're not including Curry, but you got Tim Duncan, you know what I'm saying, in there, but Curry's not in there? Come on, you guys, bro. I can name five NBA players better than Tim Duncan right this second. Now, Tim Duncan is a Hall of Fame player, an amazing NBA player. I'm not bashing him, absolutely not whatsoever. He was a face. He honestly is one of the biggest faces of the Spurs franchise. Um, won plenty of rings. This guy has a resume on him. You know what I'm saying? Um, but if you're talking about, like, you had to choose a who, you can, who, who you can take out, and I know it says honorable mentions on the bottom, but that's honorable mentions in Jimmy Highroller's opinion. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to play the favorable odds, okay? Realistically, if you're take, talking about taking out Michael Jordan in the top 10, you just need to get some help. And don't even argue with somebody about, you know, basketball at that point. You're wasting your whole, you know, your energy. Um, come on now. Tim, Tim Duncan, you got to with Russell. You know what I'm saying? Larry Bird, it was another one I was kind of go, kind of going to go on to. But, I, you know, I just feel like he definitely helped the Celtics, you know, become more of like a popular fr franchise and just face of franchises with those rings. And, you know, he's just like, he low-key was like, you you think of, like, the NBA, he's like one of the, uh, you know, uh, faces of the NBA and even still to this day. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of got to keep Larry Burner. And also because of his size, he's the, the, the way he's able to move, you got to base this. This is top 10 of all time. Athleticism is a big thing. Maybe before the 2000s and up, 
athleticism didn't really matter like all oh, that is more who can score fundamentals but you know what i'm saying larry bird can move you know what i'm saying especially for his size 6 11 um you know what i'm saying come on you, you're you're absolutely crazy if you're talking about taking out shaq you know what i'm saying you're crazy as heck taking out will chamberlain you know what i'm saying magic johnson was kind of like he low-key another one and another reason why i think so is because he had to end this NBA, you know, career early. You know, you know what for. You know what I'm saying? Don't either whatever bring that up. But it's just like the point is, is that obviously if he would have stayed longer in the NBA, uh, um, if his health allowed him to, he would have been able to, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like have more of a um, a, a stock value of work in the NBA. But I feel like like looking at it, and you just gotta obviously eliminate everybody else from not being eliminated from the top ten. Like LeBron, Kobe, and Abdul Jabbar, they gotta stay into the like you know. There's just, it's just it's just too much history involved with those guys. Hear me out, you guys. I think these four players gotta be taken out for Curry at this point. You know what I'm saying? Tim, Russell, Larry, and Magic. I'm personally, me personally, I'm choosing. I'm choosing Russell and Tim Duncan still stay on that. I was thinking uh, Johnson, uh, Magic Johnson and Tim Duncan, but Magic, you know what I'm saying? He's one. He's a he's a six ten point guard. He was a rare height and uh, at a freak, you know, at nature. At in, uh, uh, pause on that part. First part, freak part. Uh, freak nature, you know, in, in terms of just like athlete, he's just rare, you know. And but he just had to, you know, retire early. You know what I'm saying? He's definitely one of the faces of the NBA. Now, if being the face of the NBA does not mean everything. But, you know what I'm saying, like Magic, bro, you're talking about like, you know, a point guard, 6'10", that's like, you know, maybe a one or two inch shorter of Kung Po at the point guard, running them point at his time, you know what I'm saying, which is amazing. Russell and Tim Duncan, like, I just feel like, you know, they're, like I said, they're Hall of Fame players, but when it comes to athleticism, like, come on, you guys, like, 15 times athletic, easily, man, I'm running circles, 11 zip drop off, 1v1, easily. You know what I'm saying? You can't discredit Russell with having. He has like 11, 12 rings, I think. And, you know, uh, Tim has like three, four, you know, amazing power forwards slash centers. But I'm taking out them for Curry. Be different depending you on have to put Curry in the top 10. Personally, I have the He's number one in like NBA this. history now, and right now for me. But top 10 has virtually remained the same for years. The most recent player to be on this list was LeBron James, who's been on it for about a decade now. And before him, the most recent players to join this exclusive club were Yeah, Tim like if, if this is the, the top 10 in exact order, I didn't know they had the exact order. Um, yeah, uh, Curry has to be where number one is, and it's second Jordan, and the third LeBron. And Kobe Bryant. Regardless of where you choose to rank these players among your all-time top 10, the players that make up this top 10 haven't budged in over a decade. Recently, I was tempted to add Kevin Durant to this list, but realistically, I couldn't bring myself to remove That's anyone in this place, so he remains on the outside looking in. But after this championship run by Stephen Curry and his entire season as a whole, the time has come. It's time we add a new player to this list. Yes, sir. It's been a long nah, time. Nah, bro, on. you tripping. You took out Wilt? Bro, Wilt will literally average 30, 40 plus points per game right now in this time of NBA, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, this dude is literally the most dominant sports, like, figure in, in, in like, not even just NBA history, just, like, in general. I really think Wilt Chamberlain could have literally played three different sports easily, bro. He could have played NBA, NFL, and they said that he was actually pretty fast at track. I believe it. You know what I'm saying? He could have been doing them hurdles. He could have been doing the, um, you know, what did they jump over the, um, uh, 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 you're sprinting and you jump over dirt. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know about baseball, you know what I'm saying? But, bro, like, Wilt Chamberlain is like a, 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 like a Bo Jackson. You know what I'm saying? For the NBA, just taller. You can't take him out the top ten, bro. So you got to take Russell or Tim Duncan at that point. And it's well-deserved. Stephen Curry is now undebatably a top ten player of all time. And this season has cemented his spot on this list. Every all-time player has won with their respective organizations. This is a definitive requirement of greatness. But only a few players made such a massive impact that the success of an entire franchise began and ended with them. Tim Duncan introduced winning basketball to San Antonio. They couldn't win before he got there, and they haven't won since he left. Michael Jordan didn't just win with the Bulls. He was the Bulls. Stephen Curry isn't just winning in a Warriors jersey. He is a Warriors. He is 
the Golden State yeah. Warriors. In 2009, he came into a struggling franchise, and over the last 13 seasons, he has turned them into a behemoth. See, it's one thing to come into Sheesh. a franchise that has seen success, one that has won before and has championship DNA. It is a completely different accomplishment to be drafted to a franchise that has never even sniffed a title and turned them into a dynasty. Russell did it, Mike did it, Duncan did it, and Steph has spent the last decade doing it as well. But you don't have to watch Steph tear your favorite team apart to see his generational impact. Steph is as important to the Warriors' success as any player has ever been to any team in NBA history. Wow. Here's a chart of the top so 10 players all time man. and how many wins they added to their respective teams over the course of their entire career. For example, throughout Wilt Chamberlain's career, his team won 7.5% more when he played versus when he didn't play. Shaq's teams won 15% more when he played versus when he was sitting out. Now, anything above 10% is incredible, and nearly all of these players are far above that threshold. When Kobe played, the Lakers won 21.5% more games than when he didn't. Larry Bird led to the direct result of the Celtics winning 22.8% more games. And, of course, the two players that had the largest impact on their team's success are Michael Jordan, and with a large gap above everyone else, LeBron James. But the most important, most impactful, game-changing player for any franchise Curry. in the history of the NBA is Stephen Curry. Woo! The Warriors went over Finally he gets on one of these top charts, Curry man. Playing versus when he's not. That is the equivalent That's of Steph crazy. adding an additional 26 wins for the Warriors over the course of each regular season. Bro, 26 wins is crazy. Just by himself. But this isn't some sort of theoretical impact found by just using numbers. We have seen, with our own eyes, just how lost the Warriors are without Steph. Two years ago, just five games into the Warriors season, Steph broke his hand and was sidelined for the remainder of the season. And in that season, the Warriors weren't just bad. They weren't just one of the worst teams in the NBA. They were literally, by far, the worst team in the entire league. The very next season, Steph returned to the lineup and the Warriors' winning percentage more than doubled. And, well... The rest is history. No matter which players come and go, regardless of how the roster changes around him, Steph remains at the center of one of the greatest dynasties in NBA history. Yes, sir. The Warriors should have never won this championship. This title was not in the cards for them. A long shot at best. Just 10 years ago, it was almost unanimously agreed upon that a team could not win a championship off of three-pointers and jump shots. It was believed that you could not win a title with a point guard doing the heavy lifting for your offense. 2015 was a fluke. 2016 was a blown lead. The next two, well, those don't really count, right? They had Kevin Durant. All they do is shoot three. They'll never He's too small. Their injury for a pass. The Warriors aren't even a team. Oh, this edit is crazy. I wouldn't bet against us. Fact, never bet against the Warriors. What an inspirational NBA season, man. You know what I'm saying?